we learned about how to use event blocks. This is event blocks part two, okay? Last one is event blocks part one. Just for a reminder, event blocks are basically any block that starts the program or triggers something. Like when green flag clicked, it says when you click that flag, it does something. It triggers or starts something. So guys, I'm so excited to get into this video. Let's get started. Event blocks are one of the 10 categories of blocks. They are color coded light yellow and are used to sense events, which triggers scripts to be run on that event. We looked at the first three event blocks in the last video. Let's look at the rest now. Okay, so the first block we have is the when backdrop switches to block. Script associated with this block will be triggered once the specified backdrop has been switched on the stage. You can use this in your code to execute some code when you switch between backdrops. Okay, let me show you how this works with an example. All right, so we already have our scratch cat here. So let me add a couple of backdrops so I can show you switching between them. I hope you remember how to add backdrops. If not, you can go check my detailed video on different options for adding backdrops. So let me add park and beach backdrops. So let's get our backdrop. So, we have park and beach, and our cat wants to go to the park and beach, as the weather is nice outside. First, you add the when green flag clicked. This is also an event block we saw in our last video, and how this helps to start your program. So when we start the program, our cat decides to go to the beach. So let me add a think block and add the text. So let's see, I'll say, hmm, let me go to the beach. After that, I will add the code to switch backdrop. If you click on the drop down, it shows the beach backdrop we added earlier. Select that. Let's try to run it so far. So when you run this script, it shows the think block and then switches the backdrop to beach. Ooh, the cat must be really happy there. Right? Now we want to capture the event of switch backdrop so we can run a script once we are on the beach. So we will use the when backdrop switches to block. Select the beach backdrop from the drop down. And we can add any code that needs to run. We can make our cats right in a beach costume. We can make him play ball and whatever you want. For now, I will add a say block to show how our sprite is happy to be at the beach. Whoa, yay, fun day to be at the beach. Yeah, this is good. The cat must be really happy. So let's run and see this in action. Hey guys, when we're running it, there's something missing. Can you guys tell me what it is? Yes, you are correct. We do not have the park backdrop up, so it won't swap to beach. So we need to switch the backdrop to the park. So we need to start the code off with the switch the park backdrop. So let's try it out now. Yep, they're in the park. Hmm. <clears throat> Yay, fun day to be at the beach. Yeah, that was fun. There we go. We can use this block for some very cool animations. The next block we have is the when greater than block. This is a event block which starts the script below it when a value selected in the drop down menu is greater than another value entered by the number input. If you look at the drop down here, we have options as loudness and timer. Loudness is the volume of the sound picked up by the computer microphone. Lowest value is 1 and highest value is 100. Once the loudness is higher than the chosen amount, the script 
will begin to run. The next option in the drop down we have is timer. The timer is a default variable in the stretch and is constantly running. Timer can be reset. It counts from zero. So using this block, you can trigger a script when the timer value is greater than the chosen time and the script will run. So let's see an example. So let me select the timer from the drop down and let us select the value to one. Okay, and when the timer is greater than one, move the cat 20 steps. So let's try this out. Let's get our 20 steps button. It's right now 10, but let's change it to 20. Okay, let's click on it. Oop, it moved one step. Let's see, how, oop, it's moved two steps. Yep, so we have to keep on clicking it unless we use a different block that we'll learn later. So, moving on, we have the messaging blocks. I use these a lot in my animations. You basically use these blocks to trigger message events and run different scripts for different messages. A broadcast is a message that is sent through the program and it activates scripts with corresponding receive scripts. Broadcasts are sent with the blocks broadcast and broadcast and wait and are received by the when I receive block. These broadcast blocks are heavily used in games and animations. Let me show you these in action. I will show a simple example to show a conversation between two sprites. Let us first get two sprites. Let me go here and add sprites. How about we take Avery? Avery and Abby. Okay, we have our two sprites. Now we want to show an animation with conversation between these two sprites. So I just cleared the background from the earlier time, so it's cleaner. Okay, let's go ahead back to our code. Okay, let me go to the first sprite and I'll add one green flag click and we'll add the say block to start the conversation. So let's say, say, hey Abby. Now we need the other sprite to respond to this question. So she needs to know that trigger as to when to reply. There comes the broadcast block to the rescue. So let me drag the broadcast message block here and we will add a message date. You can either use your default one or add a new message. Let's maybe add a new message. Let's name it talk one. We'll have multiple talks. Okay, so this is really interesting coding, right? I really love coding. Okay, now that we broadcasted a message, our other sprite can trigger a script based on this broadcast message. We will use the when I receive broadcast message. And you can select the message from the drop down. So let's take our talk one and here add the script to respond back. And let's add the script to respond back. So let's say, hi, Avery, I'm doing well. <laughs> okay, that's good. Now, so let us try it out. Oh, nice, the conversation. Okay, there we go, perfect. If we want to continue the conversation, we can repeat the same and add another broadcast from the second sprite now and add our first sprite will respond to that broadcast message. So let's do that. Broadcast, let's create a new message. Let's name it talk to. Broadcast talk to and let's add to Avery. And then Avery, when receives talk to, Oops, the wrong block. Didn't receive talk to. There we go. And then we'll go to the looks and say, great. And let's say, great, good to see you. Okay.
Let's try that out again. Whoa, nice. This is really fun. Awesome. Like I mentioned earlier, you can use the combinations of these blocks to create some really cool animation and games. I will show you a simple animation project using these in my next video. So you can see them in action. Please try the event blocks and have fun creating some cool projects. I'll see you in my next video. Please subscribe and like the video.